welcome you all to First Presbyterian Church, and Happy New Year to you all. Please sign the red friendship pad you're going to find somewhere in the pew and share it with those worshiping with you, if anyone is sitting on your pew with you. Also, if you're here for the very first time and you fill out a yellow card, and uh, I don't have a loose one, but if you fill out a yellow card that's in the uh, pew rack there, you can uh, exchange it uh, for a wonderful uh, coffee bug when you leave. Uh, you have to look for people with a red tag on, red tag people, hospitality, raise your hand so people can see where you are. You're there, you're there, you're there, you're there. No one over there, so make sure you see those people. Uh, we are glad you are here this morning. I would like to uh, make some brief announcements. I'd like to remind you all in a couple of weeks that King's Brass is going to be here on Wednesday night. We don't have the time for the fellowship dinner that we're having that night, which is our next dinner. But I would like you to be here early and bring six dollars uh, because the uh, King's Brass will start promptly at 6.30 and we want you to have enough time to eat and get over here and get seated. There's no charge for the concert, but there will be a free will offering taken. Uh, we're starting at 6.30 because they do have a 90 minute presentation and we don't want to keep you out too late on a school night. So uh, just keep that in mind. The other announcement is your offering envelopes. If you have not gotten them yet, they are waiting for you in the narthex. Let us now prepare to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. Let us worship God. Please join me in hymn number 697, Take My Life. Please stand as you are able.
our praises, O oh God, for you are gracious. The song of praise is fitting. You heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. You determine the number of stars and give them their names. Your greatness abounds and your understanding is beyond measure. We will sing to you hymns of thanksgiving and make melody with songs of praise as you take pleasure in those who hope in your steadfast love. Be pleased with our worship as we lift our voices in glad adoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's the neck? Oh, much better. Good, good. Today will probably be interesting. There's a bunch of emotions that people are going to bring to the table. So they might make for a longer morning. That's what I said. Yeah, we've got the new elders. And then they're, you know, wanna, looking to hire some kind of new director. Or, or, you know, Youth ministry or something like that. Good morning. How are you? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
picking, you were picking, who were you picking up, Maggie when I was calling you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is she doing good? Yeah. Cool. Oh my God. Oh. Fantastic. Wow. I had two girls. That's it. Yeah. They're mixing it up now. You are? No, they are. Oh, yeah. You guys are. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. learning about that. Sure. Sure. church, uh, 
Uh, Susan Scott was known to many in the community uh, and the tragic uh, uh, accident she had on Friday. And we want to remember her husband Stanley and her daughter Nancy as well. As we uh, turn to God with our prayers, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you, uh, you call us into this world and you call us out. But whether we are in this world or the next, we belong to you. You are our maker, sustainer, redeemer, and friend. You love us with an everlasting love, and your grace abounds beyond the bounds of vision. We thank you for this life, for its friendships, its fellowships, its wonders and mysteries. And we thank you for the lives of Susan and Eleanor, and we pray for their families here in a time of grief. We pray for all those who are suffering loss today and are mourning, and we pray that you will renew their spirits as they finish their grieving. Be with those who are sick today and give them strength. Some are present, uh, some are unable to be here, but are here in spirit. We pray for them, O oh God. We pray for their strength. We pray for you who are out, that you will sustain them, O oh God, who are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. As we go into this new year, we ask you to bless us as you have blessed us in every year. Show us your light, show us your wisdom, and teach us your holy way. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Let's continue worshiping God by bringing God our gifts, our tithes, and offerings.
in Christ we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to your purpose, O God. We seek to live now for the praise of your glory. Accept these gifts we bring as symbols of our renewed commitment to Christ's will for our lives. Use them to enhance your kingdom beyond the walls of this sanctuary and bring a sense of your presence to all that they benefit. Make us ever mindful of those who are needy and more diligent in our use of the means of your grace. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We only have one passage today. Uh, it's a bit of a homily. Uh, I'm giving Joe Work, our elder of the day, a, a, some duty off at this point. But Joe's done a wonderful job today. Uh, this passage from John uh, 6, 51 through 58. This is what we, we skip over it because uh, it's, it's a little well, interesting. Just hear the word of God. Or you may read along on page 120 in your few Bible. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. This is an interesting way to start our homily, but uh, there's a story that goes this way. It's a story told of three apprentice devils who were coming to the earth for their first assignment. And they met with Satan, who asked them what strategy they planned to follow. And the first one said, I will tell people that there is no God. That said Satan will not work, because in their heart of hearts, they know that there is a God. So the second said, I will tell them that there is no hell. That won't work either, said Satan, because there's so much evil on earth, they know there must be a hell. The third prince devil thought for a moment, and then he said, I will tell them that there is no hurry. <laughs> Satan replied, go and tell them that, and you will ruin them by the knowing I think that is one of the hardest things we deal with, is just putting things off, isn't it? It's easy for us to do, and each new year comes along, and we put off things for a long time, and uh, a new year comes, the calendar turns, and we go, it's time for a resolution. And then we go back to uh, putting things off, and as the devil's apprentice suggests, we confront these things daily, but find a way to do them later and later. I'd like for us to do something this year, and I think it's something we can start today, and you can feel good when you when you leave today. Let this be the year when we actually try to become closer to Jesus Christ, and we start that here at this table. It is fitting that each month and each year that we begin, we begin here at the table, the celebration of communion. But what we take for granted was not always commonplace, and at the end of the first century, in the time of the early church, and the days when the Gospel of John was written down uh, on paper to be passed along about 100 AD or so, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper apparently seemed strange and even controversial to some. That scripture lesson that I read from John chapter 6 reflects the strangeness some found in the idea of the Lord's Supper. And although that is happening 70 years earlier, the fact that John is writing this specific thing down for us can tell us that it was still a controversy in the church much later. 
We agree as we take communion that we take the body and blood of Christ as Presbyterians in a very spiritual way together into ourselves. Many of the Jews of the first century, century apparently rejected the idea outright. And John's passage indicates even some of Jesus' own disciples were finding this difficult to accept. Take the body and blood into ourselves? How strange. Perhaps we've become so familiar with the sacrament of the Lord's Supper that we sometimes uh, don't appreciate how peculiar it sounds. Our lesson encourages us to consider again what communion really means. How do we as sinners aspire to live lives which are worthy of this table? How do we have Christ in our hearts? When Jesus was giving us this table, though, it wasn't because we had earned it, but specifically because we had not. It is a gift of his grace, a way for us to experience in a physical way his presence after he ascended into heaven. We are internalizing Christ in the sacrament. A hard saying in the first century, especially the part about drinking the blood of Christ. It was strictly forbidden in Jewish law to drink blood, much less that of a person. And I would imagine there are some states in America that have laws against drinking particular kinds of blood. What Jesus gave us by giving his body to consume for us is the true bread of heaven, the bread that gives eternal life. Some of the church have called the celebration an outward sign of an inward grace. There's a story about a minister and his young son walking in the ocean on a Sunday afternoon after reading and working on this passage. And the boy said to his father, Dad, I cannot understand how Christ can live in us and we live in him at the same time. And further down the beach, the father noticed there was a, an empty bottle with a, a cap on it, and uh, he picked it up and emptied what was in it and, and filled half of it with the water of the ocean. And then he put the cap on. I'm sure he didn't let it float away because that would be littering in the ocean, which is very bad. But for the illustration, he put the bottle half filled with water in the ocean. He said, son, the sea is in the bottle, and the bottle is in the sea. It is a picture of life in Christ. You, un, you live under the lordship of Christ, and, and he lives in you. We, we know we are sinful. We know we do not deserve coming to this table. That is precisely why the table is here. And even though we are sinful, we can still work on that this year. We, we know that we do things, and we say things that are most regrettable. Uh, it is, we, are, we know that when we should be sober, we are drunk. And we know that uh, we say things many times before we think them out. At least I am guilty of that. And we say things when people are not present uh, in such a way that we think is helpful, but when we realize we uh, think about it later are much more like gossip and less like helpful things. Gossip and the rumors they create are powerful forces. And if we want to keep a, a good... Uh, Thing for us, to, a resolution for us this new year, it would be to stop doing that. In 1887, the coffin of Abraham Lincoln was pried open after he'd been laid to rest for 22 years because a rumor had started that he wasn't in it, even though he'd been taken everywhere in it and seen by so many. And so they dug him up and they opened the coffin and said, yep, that's him. And they closed it back. But the rumor persisted. And it started again, and 14 years later, they dug up Lincoln a second time. I'm not making this up. They dug up the President of the United States a second time, this time with a group uh, gathered from around the country to go look and see that, yes, that is Abraham Lincoln. That is still him. I guess he still had a stove pipe pad and fear, but he was recognizable even then. All the good intended rumors do nothing except tear down and destroy. This year, let us stop concerning ourselves with what other people are doing and focus on our lives and how we live. In order to live a life that is Christ-worthy, we must also not underestimate the value of wisdom. Christians who made are made of the right stuff are called to make good choices, like the man in the following story. 
An angel appears at the faculty meeting at a school and tells the dean that in return for his unselfish and exemplary behavior, the Lord will reward him with his choice of infinite wealth, wisdom, or beauty. And without hesitating, the dean selects infinite wisdom. Done, says the angel, and there's a puff of smoke and a little bolt of lightning, and the angel disappears. And he says nothing. And finally, someone whispers, say something. And he said, I should have taken the money. <laughs> should I tell that again? <laughs> what about our hearts? What about those? Heart is used in scripture as the most comprehensive term for the authentic person. It is the part of our being where we desire, deliberate, and decide the place of conscious and decisive spiritual activity. That's got to be something for the new year, too. We need our hearts to be in Christ. It is not enough to uh, have good works. It is not enough to exemplify Christ if Christ is not inside us, if Christ is not deep in our hearts. Another thing about being a follower of Christ this new year is knowing that we need to forgive and that we need forgiveness. These things are going to draw us closer and give us one resolution that we can get this year by getting closer to Christ. Like a, like a bottle half filled with the sea and floating in it, we must live in Christ as Christ lives in us. We should make every moment of every day count because Jesus is a part of our lives. Let Jesus into every facet of your life too using all your wisdom necessary. But let Christ reside there in your heart. Let Christ be your treasure. And those who do not know Christ, when they meet us, let them see Christ in us. Let us pray. God, thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, who died for us. Thank you for his death on the cross sacrifice of his body and blood and, and thank you for this Lord's Supper. Help us to prepare ourselves, body and soul, for communion with Christ today and through this new year that he may appear outwardly in our lives and also deep inside us in our hearts. This we pray in Christ's name. Dearly beloved, hear what gracious words our Savior Jesus Christ says to all who truly turn and come to him. Come unto me, all you that labor and your heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and she that believes in me shall never thirst. Behold, whoever comes to me I will not cast out. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. As he gave thanks on that night in which he was betrayed, let us give thanks now for this bread and this cup, and set them apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery. Let us pray. Eternally gracious God, we thank you for this table and what it represents to us. We ask you to take this bread and this cup and set them apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery that the bread we break may be the body of Christ and the cup we share his precious blood. Receive each of us, O oh God, as living sacrifices henceforth to your glory, Father, Son, and Spirit, world without end. Amen. <coughs> On the night in which he was betrayed, our Savior took bread. And when he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, our Savior took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. All of you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup. You do show forth the Lord's death until he comes.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ broken for you.
blood of Christ shed for you. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you that you have fed us at this table with spiritual food and assured us of your goodness towards us that we are members of the mystical body of your Son and heirs of your everlasting kingdom. Assist us now with your grace that we may henceforth live for your glory, Father, Son, and Spirit, world without end. did come up earlier. If I've been installed in one office, does that mean I have to be ordained again in a different office? And the answer is yes. Uh, elders and deacons uh, have different roles to play. We almost fit. That's good. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ owned by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the Church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. Representing the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, the session of First Presbyterian Church of Ocala, Florida, now ordains Todd Karsten, Pat Reeves, Amy Johnson, Caroline Schlenker, Ann Vandenberg, Jesse Mosley, Kay Yancey, Joe Simmons, Jared Fleming, and Lois Stolen. Um, I probably should have done the deacons and the ruling elders separate. I'm sorry. That's okay. You are forgiven. <laughs> and installs them to active service in this congregation. Would the congregation please stand as you are able? Although the bulletin doesn't contain it, many of you know it, uh, we would like to affirm. Uh, our faith as God, but before we do, listen to these questions. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given to the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore, all of us, reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its powers in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? 
Those who know it and those who can find it, let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Please join me in our thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea, out of bondage and into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your Son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit, renew us, that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now will God's people say, Amen. I'm now ready to ask you all the constitutional questions. Remember carefully, uh, some have trick answers. In your baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Peace USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge Him Lord of all and Head of the Church, and through Him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Amen. Do you accept the Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Holy uh, be the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the Church Universal and God's Word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our Church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your ministry? in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's Word and Spirit? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. I think it's your turn. The session also installs to active service those who have previously been ordained. Deacons Joe Mosley, and Pat Bishop, and ruling elders Elaine Cox, Donnie Sloan, Howell Winfrey III, and Dave Schlenker. Uh, I have a question.
Russian just for deacons. Uh, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? For the ruling elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share the government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Do we, the members of the church, accept Todd Karsten, Pat Greaves, Amy Johnson, Caroline Schlenker, Elaine Cox, Donnie Sloan, Howell Winfrey III, Dave Schlenker, Ann Vandenberg, Kay Yancey, Joe Simmons, Jared Fleming, Lois Dolan, Jesse Mosley, Joe Mosley, and Pat Bishop as ruling elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Do we? Amen. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do we? I'd like to call forward ruling elders who are with us, not all of you, you stay right where you are if there are any ruling elders up here, but ruling elders to come forward for the laying on of hands, and if you are able to kneel, you may do so at this time. We will help you up later. Absolutely. If you can't kneel, it's okay. Just come close, we'll lay hands on you. Okay. And I'll ask the elders to come forward at this time. And if some of them can't reach all the way in, some will want to. Uh, some can put a shoulder on the hand on the shoulder of the person in front of them. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for our ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and truth. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon your servants whom you call by baptism as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ. We give you thanks for those who have also previously served. Sustain your church and ministry, Ground us in the gospel. Secure our hope in Christ. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness to the world, the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may rise. You are now deacons and ruling elders ordained to ministries of service and governance of the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry that so your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Please uh, share the right hand fellowship with those in front of us and those behind us can come shake hands too. stand for the opening, for the closing hymn, not the opening hymn, the closing hymn. <laughs> Number 69, please stand as you are able.
installed in all of you to be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. May the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>